Welcome everyone. In today's session, we're going to do some practice from the Personal Tax Financial Act 2020 and this assessment from the A2 website. So if you log into your My A2 account, you're going to see this uh, practice assessment and that is quite important because this is the format of the exam you're going to see in the exam hall. So let's start with the task one. This, uh, this question is for 10 marks. Let's read this question, what we have here. It says, you work for a small firm of charter accountant. You have received an email from a whistleblower stating that one of your clients owns a very busy car wash located in the car park of a restaurant. You have checked the client file and the only business which is being declared to HMRC as a restaurant. So basically one of the persons said your client have a car wash business and they did not declare it to HMRC. So when you check the client file, you see uh, he's telling the truth. The client uh, did not mention anything about the car wash business. Now it is very important, like if you have a business, you have to tell HMRC, otherwise you don't showing the income, you are not showing the expense, or you, you are not paying the tax. And if you're avoiding the tax, this is a offense. So you cannot, um, you cannot avoid the tax. You cannot do the tax evasion. This is a criminal offense. So if you have income, you have to declare to HMRC. Let's read the requirement. What is uh, the requirement here? It says using the AT guideline professional conduct in relation to taxation, explain what steps you should take regarding the possible irregularity. Now, if there is an irregularity of the income, so what you can do as an accountant? So let's have a look, what is the steps here? The first thing I need to know, like who I'm dealing with. So if this person is the owner of the business or who are this person? So if this person is not the owner of the business, uh, the person I'm dealing with, uh, the accounts. So I really don't have to do uh, anything, but if I'm dealing with the client file and obviously I need to raise the issue with the client. So I need to tell the client, do you have any business that you did not declare to HMRC? So the first thing I need to see, like, um, what is the issues here? So I'm going to ask, is there anything you have to declare? So I'll tell my client, is everything declared to HMRC? Now, if the answer is no from the client, then I have to tell the client, you have to declare all of this to HMRC. So I'm going to tell my client, you cannot hide an income from the car wash business. You have to tell the HMRC. So I'm going to say, disclose, disclose to HMRC. Now, if the client said yes, I'm happy to disclose. If the client said yes, then there is no problem, but still I need to tell if you declare now, maybe you have started a few years back the car wash, but you didn't tell, maybe HMRC will give you some penalty, some interest, some surcharge. So you need to tell this to the client. So you need to tell your client, maybe HMRC will give you some penalty or something. So you have to accept it. So you need to tell about the penalties and the uh, interest or any other consequence. So we have to tell this client. If the client said, no, I'm not going to uh, declare to HMRC that I have a car wash business, then I need to tell, I will not be able to provide any service anymore. So I will say it, I will not work as an agent for the company anymore. So I'm not going to work as an agent for your company anymore, but remember, I'm not going to give any re reason. So I'm not gonna tell the client why I'm resigning. So I'm going to resign or I'm going to cease uh, providing any sort of services to the companies, but I'm not going to tell the reason to HMRC why I'm, uh, why I'm resigning. So I'm going to write a letter to HMRC and tell like, 
I'm resigning from this company as an agent. So I'm not going to provide any service uh, to this company from this day, but for the confidentiality purpose, I'm not going to tell the reason why. So this is a story. So if you see this type of caution, obviously like this kind of uh, uh, relevant to the ethical uh, situation. So if the, if the client don't try to disclose something, I have to tell the client, you have to disclose it because it is important. And also I have to tell the client, if you disclose it now, they might give it a penalty. If the client said, I like to disclose, then I'll tell what is the consequence. If the client said, no, I don't like to disclose, then I need to say I cannot provide any services because you have to disclose this information to HMRC. But I will never give the reason why I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to uh, provide any service. I, I'll say it like from today, I'm not going to provide any service for this client. I'll be, um, I'll be seized providing any services, but I'm not going to tell the reason. All right, so this is kind of the theoretical question. Uh, it's not very difficult anyway. So let's move to the next bit. The next bit we have here, this question for the uh, domicile status. That is quite important. You have to know the domicile rules, how does it work? So let's have a look what is the question here. Another one of your clients, uh, Rupinder is 25 years old. She was born in the UK, okay? She was born in the UK, but her domicile of the origin was not in the UK. So she born, maybe she wasn't live here. So that's why she don't have the domicile status in the UK. She lived abroad until she was two years old, but she has resided in the UK since then. So basically she was living uh, two years in abroad. And after that, she moved to UK. So she born in UK after that she moved somewhere, she stayed there two years. And after that, uh, she came back to the UK. Now the question here is explain to Rupinder whether she will have deemed domicile status for the tax year 2021 and uh, an information she has provided based on the information she has provided and why you have made the decision. So I have to give the decision are you deem domicile? Now, domicile is kind of like, are you the resident of the UK? So all the tax rules will be uh, applicable to you or not. So if you are domicile in the UK, so every single tax rules um, uh, we have in UK, so that will be applicable to you. If you are not, then uh, no. So there is a domicile uh, criteria. Also, there is something called deem domicile. So let's have a look what is the condition for the deem domicile and Let's have a look the condition is fulfilled or not. So if we open the domicile criteria from the book and we'll be able to see that. So let's have a look what we have here. So we can see here, they said, this is also a concept of dim domicile. If you are not domicile in the UK under the English common law, you are treated as domicile in the UK for all tax purpose if either condition A or condition B is met. If you met dim domicile rules, you will be assessed on your worldwide income. So it doesn't matter what type of income you have from which country, you have to pay the tax. Uh, doesn't matter if you have income from the different country as well. So we have two condition and one of the condition either, they said either condition A or condition B is met. So between this condition, A or B, any of them is satisfied, then I'm going to say, yes, uh, you will be treated as a dim domicile. So the condition A is said, the individual was born in the UK. So we can say, yes, she born in the UK. Domicile of origin was UK does not, isn't it? This condition doesn't satisfy because she was an origin uh, domicile in the UK because she lived two years um, abroad after she born in the UK. Was a resident in the UK for 2017, 18 or later years. That's true, isn't it? So after two years, she moved back to the UK. So from 2017, 18 and later years, she is started living in the United Kingdom. So we can see like out of the three condition, two is satisfied. So we can say like A is not fully satisfied. It has to be satisfied fully. The next one is condition B. It says the individual has been 
UK resident for at least 15 of the 20 years immediately before the tax year. So my recent tax year is 2021 and she is 25 years old. She is 25 years old. And after two years, she moved back to UK. So that means she is living here 23 years. So she lived 15 years. So I think it is a very clear, this condition is satisfied because she is living last 23 years. So she has definitely lived more than 20 years. So I would say this condition is fulfilled. And if either one condition is satisfied, A or B, we can say, uh, she will be treated as a deemed domicile. So he said, yes, we're going to treat her as a deemed domicile. So we'll go back and we're going to write all this condition that we just mentioned here. And after that, we're going to say, yes, she will be treated. My decision will be, she will be treated as a deemed domicile. So deemed domicile. And I'm going to tell the reason why. I'm going to tell the condition A. So also two is satisfied from there. So we're not going to take it, but B is fully satisfied. Fully satisfied. And that's the reason we're going to treat her as a deep domicile. This is a theoretical question. Obviously, uh, there are some solution of this practice as well. If you read that, you'll understand more. Okay, now we move to the next point, the next question that will be the calculation part. So let's have a look what we have the next question, uh, task number two. Now the task two will be uh, about the taxable benefit. So let's have a look at this question and try to understand from here. It says um, for eight marks, Chris and Sam had the use of a company car during 2020 and 21. All of the necessary information in respect of each car is detailed below. So we have a two person, one is Chris and one is Sam, and they take some benefit. What benefit the car from the company? This question will be always in the exam. Remember that, so this type of kind benefit question or uh, employee get benefit from the employer, this type of question definitely will be in the exam. So you have to be very clear about it. So you can see uh, the car, Chris and Sam, number of month car available, eight month and 12 month for this year. Car registration date is very important. I'll tell you why the registration date is important. So Chris, 7th of April and Sam, 1st of February. Then fuel detail, the fuel detail is we have hybrid petrol and electric uh, mile range is 20 mile, diesel, that uh, the condition is satisfied for the RED2. So we can see the diesel car, but it's, it's satisfied the RED2. If, if it is uh, satisfied the condition for the RDE2, that means it will be treated as like a petrol car. So we don't have to add four, four person extra. So we don't have to add four person extra for our scale charge. So if any diesel car that satisfied the RDE2, so we, we're not going to charge anything extra for that. Carbon dioxide emission, CO2 emission 40 gram and 157 gram for the SAM. Cost price is the 40 and uh, for the SAM is 30. List price 45 and 36 for the SAM. Employee contribution to the cost of the car. There is uh, no contribution from Chris, but SAM contribute uh, 6,000. Employee contribution to use the car. Chris has no contribution. But SAM has no contribution. Uh, fuel provided by the employer. So the fuel benefit is provided by the employer. For the Chris, it is no. For the Sam, it is yes. So let's read the requirement. What is the requirement? They said complete the following table to show Chris and Sam taxable benefit in kind for the car for 2020 and 21. Show your monetary answer in the whole pound only. Now, if you work uh, uh, as an accountant, obviously like if any benefit you give to your employee, you have to show in the P11D. There is a form called P11D. And on this form, you write every detail that benefit you give to your employee. And you have to submit this one every year by 31st of July to HMRC. And the employee have to pay some tax and the employer also depends on the situation. 
So let's uh, read this uh, three question and try to see what will be the answer and what is the calculation we have here. So I'm going to open the book. I will show you where we have the detail. Then we come back to actually the question. All right, so we have the carb benefit pays here. So you can see the carb benefit. The starting point for the calculating carb benefit is the list price. So remember that we always take the list price of the car. So if there is any other accessories or anything, we're not gonna take it. We only take the list price for the car. And then we have some other information. We don't need it really because we're looking for some scale charges. So we have the percentage used varies depending on the CO2 emission, the electric range for the hybrid car, whether the car is petrol or diesel, in addition, the car registration before 6 April 2020 will be subject to a 2% higher rate. That's very important. So that's the reason the question give us the car registration date. So if any car registered before 6 April 2020, it will be subject to 2% higher rate. So I will add it all the scale charge. After that, I'm going to add 2% extra. So if any car registered, after 6 April. So we can see the car for the crease, the next one, this car register after that. So maybe we need to add 2% on that. Then we can see here we have for the electric and hybrid for the SAM. So we have mileage 20 mile that is less than 30. So his car mileage is um, less than uh, 20. So that is less than 30, of course. So 20 come under less than 30. So that is 12 person. And we can see the CO2 emission that is uh, between 50 to 54 uh, gram. Uh, that is, this is uh, zero to 50 grams. So we said, okay. So this is the condition fulfilled for the SAM. So if you open the question, uh, we can have a look at that. So actually you can see SAM made the condition for that. So we have a hybrid petrol that is 20 miles and the carbon dioxide we have here, that is 40 grams. So that is less than 50 and the mileage is less than 30. So we said, okay, if it is less than um, 50 and if it is uh, less than 30 miles, so that is 12%. So the scale charge is clear for us for the 12%. Now we look for the SAM. For the SAM, we can see we have to do the calculation. It is a very simple calculation, but we have to remember the date 6 April 2020. So let's have a look when we registered the car for uh, Chris. So let's have a look. Uh, so you can see for the Chris, it is 7 April 2020. So that is after 6 April, isn't it? But for the Sam is 1st February, that is before 6 April. So before 6 April. So that means I have to add 2% per, extra. Whatever is the calculation, the scale charge, I have to add 2% extra. So I said, that's fine. So what I'll do with that now, so I'm going to, I'm going to do the calculation. So for this one, I'm very sure for the crease, only 12% because this is less than 50. So less than 50 gram. And also this is 20, that is less than 30. So two condition fulfilled. So I'm going to take only 12%. So I'm going to say the skill charge, the skill charge will be 12%. Now for the SAM, I have to do some calculation because the CO2 omission is a 157, but it fulfilled the condition for the RDE2. That means I'm going to charge as a pet petrol car. That means I don't have to put additional uh, to uh, four person. So I'm going to say 157, 157, and I'm going to minus 55. So for the 55, we have a fixed 14 person. So I'm going to say 157 minus 55. And for every five, I'm going to add one person. So this is the formula from the question. You can see it. This is the way you calculate the scale charge. So 157, we have the CO2 emission minus 55 from the formula. For 55, I'm going to add 14%. And 55 will be divided by five because for every five, I'm going to add one person. So I would say 157 minus 55 divided by five. That gives me 20%, 20.4%. 20 and I'm going to add 
14 person that's for the 55 so 14 person and that gives me 34.4 person and also because the car is registered after uh, before 6 april 2020 so i have to add two person extra so two person extra because the car is registered before 6 april 20 so i'm going to say two person extra and that gives me 36.4 person and we have to round down remember that don't round up round down to 36 so you're going to say 36 person round down to 36 we're not going to make 36.4 or 37 no we round down to 36 person all right, this is the story. And, uh, and then uh, scale charge is done for us. So let's quickly complete the scale charge. So you're going to say scale charge for the Chris, it is 12%. And for the Sam, it is 36%. The next question we have a taxable benefit on the provision of the car. Okay, what is a taxable benefit? So let's try to calculate that. What is the taxable benefit? Taxable benefit will be calculated on the list price. Remember that on the list price. Taxable benefit will be always calculated on the list price. So we said, okay. So list price is a 45,000 for uh, Sam, for Chris. And uh, we said uh, 45,000. And uh, we have uh, so forty five thousand, and on forty five thousand, I'm going to do twelve person. Is a twelve person we have, so that gives me forty five thousand times twelve person. That gives me five thousand four hundred, and we have the car available for eight months so i'm going to say okay so eight months so divide by 12 times by eight so divide by 12 because this benefit for the whole year so divide by 12 times by eight this gives me the benefit for only this year eight month that is 3600 because this year i didn't use the car for the whole year 12 month only it was available for eight months so i'm going to say 3600 so I said, okay, 3,600. Then for the SAM, it is quite straightforward. So we have 3,600, 36,000, the list price. Remember 36,000 is the list price, but, but um, we have to minus the employee contribution because uh, SAM uh, paid some money uh, capital contribution against the list price. So he contributes 6,000, I have to minus 6,000, but there is a little restriction. We cannot minus 6,000. The maximum cap is 5,000. So maximum capital contribution that I can minus from the list price, that will be five. I cannot cross five. So I can say, I can say, I can do only five. I cannot do 6,000. Even though if, if the employee pay 10,000, I can minus maximum 5,000. So I said 36,000 minus 5,000, that gives me 31,000. And I'm going to do 36% on that. So 31,000 times 36%, that gives me 11160. And finally, we have a full benefit. Now the full benefit, nothing for the Chris, only for the SAM. Now, full benefit is fixed. Full benefit is fixed is a 24,500, I believe, for this year, 2020 21. So, 24,500 is fixed, the full benefit. So, all you need to do, you have to find 24,500 that's fixed for every single full benefit. And you have to multiply by 36% the scale charge that you have calculated here. So it's a 24,500 times 36%. And that gives me 8820. So that's my full benefit. Let's move to the next one. The next one we have here, that is uh, the MCQ type question. 
So we have to choose something from here. Let's have a look what we have here. Identify how, if at all, the following changes to the information in A would affect the accessible benefit in kind for Sam or Chris in 2020-21. Assume each change was the only change to the information in A. So if there is a changes, what will happen? So let's have a look, what is the changes? They said, if Chris had accessories or 95 added to his car when it was first available, remember, we only took, we only consider the list price, any accessories values we never consider for the kind benefit. So we're not going to consider any accessories. For example, if they buy any seat cover, if they buy any doormat, anything, it's not gonna be considerable. Only the list price of the car, that will be considered for the uh, benefit kind. So I'm going to say no effect on the assessment benefit kind because it is a seat cover, it's not the list price or it is it is accessories. If Sam car registered on 10th of April, that means after 6th of April instead of 1st of February. So they said if it is after 6th of April rather than 1st of February, what will happen? Obviously the 2% extra will be gone. So the benefit, the kind benefit, the tax will be reduced by 2% because uh, uh, it, is, if, it is only 2% extra if the car is registered before 6th of April, 2020. So I'm going to say decrease, decrease the accessible kind benefit because if it is after 6 April 2020, it is 2% less. If it is before, it is 2% more. If Sam had made a capital contribution 4,000 instead of 6,000, so now he paid 6,000. Because of the 6,000, we minus the 5,000 from, uh, from the capital contribution. Now, if he contribute only four, that means his benefit will be inc increased, isn't it? So he will pay tax on more amount. So now we said like 36,000 minus 5,000 and we calculate the tax on 31,000. But if he paid only 4,000, we have calculated the scale charge on 32,000. So obviously it would be more. All right, so this is our question number two. Let's move to the question number three. Let's have a look what we have there. All right, so this is our question number three. We can see this question from the a benefit again. So let's read this question. We have below, it is a list of benefit that C limiter provide to, it, to its employees. So the employer gives some benefit to the employee. Enter the amount that would be taxable for the 2020 and 21 for each benefit in the box provided. If your answer is zero, enter zero. Uh, enter your answer in the whole pounds only. Okay, so let's try that. So we have to know all the rules for the tax if you like to answer this type of question. The first one, they said, Julie move into a house provided by C Limited. C Limited is the employer and Julie is the employee. On 1st August, 2015, when its market value was 3.2650. So she moved to this house 1st of August, 2015. The house cost for the employer C Limited is this in January 2010. It's very important to understand this point because if you give the house to your uh, employee and uh, if you buy the house within like more than six years before, then you take the market price. So you take the market price. But if it's less than six years, then you take the cost price. Now we can see we buy the house 2010 and we give it to the employee 2015. So it is not more than six years. So it's still gonna take the cost, not the market value. If it is more than six years, then I'm going to take the market value, not the cost. The house has annual value 6,900. Julie pay C limited 500 per month toward the use of the house. Okay, so it's very simple. So obviously what we need to do, we need to find how much is the additional benefit. So annual rent or annual value is 6,900. How much Julie paid? Julie paid 500 per month. So for 12 months, for the one year, Julie paid 6,000. So ultimately, 900 is the additional benefit for Julie. Now this is the additional benefit, but we have to have some additional benefit that is like kind of the interest rate that we have to add with the benefit because the house is expensive. If any house is more than 75,000, we have to add the official rate of interest with the benefit. So 
we can see we're going to take the cost we have already explained why we're going to take the cost because uh, we're not going to take the market value because the house is given uh, less than six years time so if i buy the house more than six years before to give to the employee i'm going to take the market value but here i'm going to take the cost so i'm going to say two hundred and thirty six thousand two fifty and i'm going to minus seventy five thousand 75,000 is the base. Up to 75,000, there is no interest we're going to charge. So you're going to say 236, 236, then 250 minus 75,000. That gives me 161250. Now I'm going to charge the official interest rate that is 2.25%. 2.25%. So times 2.25% and that gives me 36.28. So I'm going to add this on with that, 36.28. If I added this two with the 900, 36.28 plus 900, that gives me 45.28. So that's my total benefit, 4528. All right. All right, the next one we have here, that is um, a television and cinema system costing still limited 15,000 was brought for Ranjit use on September, so from September. So from September to March, how many months? September to March 21. So September, October, November, December, January, February, March, seven month seven months so benefit will be calculated based on seven months so fifteen thousand times twenty percent divided by twelve times by seven isn't it so let's calculate how much is the benefit kind here so fifteen thousand times twenty percent divided by twelve times by seven that gives me seventeen hundred fifty this is the benefit because we only consider the benefit, the benefit we have used for this year. So we got the system on September. It could be television, it could be any sound system, anything given by the employer, we're going to calculate the same way. So you'll see when we get it from there until the tax year end and we calculate 20% divided by 12 times by the number of months we have used. The next one we have here in, in grid was given the house of a company, uh, uh, company house for all of 2020-21, okay? The house is treated as a job-related accommodation. Okay, if the house is um, treated as a job-related accommodation, there's a little bit uh, different way you have to calculate that. Uh, C Limited paid for all the service costs, that is 3,600 and in grid, the employee's net earning is 33,400. Remember that if the house is uh, given because of it is job related, then we have to see, we have to pick the lower one. So lower of, lower of, lower between these two, how much the employer paid for the employee and 10% of the net earning. So 10% of this. 10% of this. So 3,400, so that will give me 3,340, isn't it? So between 33 and 40 and 3,600, which one is the lower? That's the lower one. So I'm going to pick that. So if the job related accommodation is given, so you're going to pick the lower of between how much employer the company paying for the employee and how much is the net earning of the employee, you're going to calculate 10% on that. All right, the next one we have, Georgie moved 150 miles due to a promotional and received 9,000 to help with the removal. Remember, remember, remember that removal expenses allowed up to 8,000. Removal expenses allowed up to 8,000. 8, if it, anything is more than 8,000, then it is not, uh, it is not uh, allowable expense. It is not exempted. So we have to find the difference. So 9,500 minus 8,000 and that will give us 1,500. So 9,500 minus 8,000, up to 8,000 it is exempted. 
anything above the 8,000, you have to find the difference. We have to record it. So 1,500 will be the benefit kind. The next one we have here, on 1st July 2020, James received a loan 12,000 on which he paid 3.5% interest. This is the only loan he has received. He has not repaid any of the loan. Okay, remember that loan is exempted up to 10,000. Up to 10,000 pound loan to the employee is exempted. You don't have to do anything. But if the loan is more than 10,000, we're going to ask to the employee, are they, are they are going to pay the interest or not? Here we can see, this guy, James, is paying the interest, 3.5%. If the person pay the interest, then that will be not treated as a benefit kind because he's paying the interest. Now, if the person paid less than the official rate of interest, then there will be a little bit different calculation, but he's paying the interest more than official rate that is 2.25%. So he's paying more than the official rate by the HMRC, they are paying more interest. So obviously this will not be treated as a benefit kind for the loan. So I'm going to say it is zero. Even though the loan is 12,000, more than 10,000, but he's paying the interest, so it will be not treated as a benefit kind. But if the company try to write off the loan, there's a different calculation that will be treated as like a dividend. So if, if a company give a loan to someone and after that, if the company try to write off the loan, remove the loan from the system, then obviously that will be treated as a dividend. That's a different calculation anyway. Then we have a next one. Margaret receive a watch as a 25 years old service award. This was Margaret's first long service award and the watch cost is 1450. Remember for the long job service award or any type of award that will be 50 per year, 50 per service year, 50 per service year. So for the 25 years, so we can say 25 and every year it is exempted up to 50 pound. So 25 times 50, that gives me 1,250. So up to 1,250 is exempted. So we can see the, car, uh, the, uh, the watch price was 1,450, so minus 1,450. So we have, to calc we have to pay the tax on this 200 pounds. So 200 pounds will be charged as a taxable benefit. So even though uh, it was only one thing for the whole life, but for every year, only 50 pound is exempted. So obviously if it is more than 50, we have to pay uh, the tax on that and it will be treated as a benefit kind. The next one we have here, B, uh, Brooklyn receive eight per night in incidental expenses for five consecutive nights when working away from the home in the UK. So working away from the home, I think it is allowed to like five pound per night, five pound per night is exempted. It is five pound per night, it is exempted. But if it is more than that, we have to pay full, we have to charge this one as a full benefit kind. So eight pound per night and five nights, so it's 40. Remember that we don't find the difference like eight minus five and three is a uh, benefit kind. So three times five, 15, no. If it is cross the amount, um, if it is cross the amount that is five per night. Let me double check with the rules again. So it is five or six, let me check it. Uh, yes, we can see it, the exam benefits. All the exam benefits are here. It is page number 59 on the BPP book. We can see all the exam benefits here like job related accommodation, then removal expense up to 8,000. So one um, car parking. So everything what is exempted is the list is here. So we can see here, incidental expense five pound per night uh, from the home and 10 pound if you are from abroad. So the, he's working from the home, uh, away from the home. So that should be five pound is exempted. But if it is more than five pound, they have to pay the full amount. Um, uh, they have to pay full, uh, consider full amount as a tax purpose. So the whole amount will be charged as a taxable benefit. So it's not like even he's expending only, um, he's expending uh, eight per night. Uh, doesn't mean like we have to consider only three, we have to consider a full. So you're going to say eight times five. So it will be 40. 
All right, so this is our uh, benefit kind question, task number three. Let's move to the next question. That is question number uh, four. Let's have a look what we have there. All right, so let's read the question number four for six marks. Let's have a look what we have here. It says the information below relates to the investment income receiving during 2020 and 21 by three taxpayer, okay? So you have a three taxpayer, you have to calculate the tax for them. Complete the following sentence for each taxpayer. If your answer is zero, enter zero, enter. Your answer is a whole pound only, so you don't have to enter the pence. Uh, the first one we have here, Doris received a dividend 10,000 pound, her taxable income after personal allowance total 21,500. The tax payable by Doris on this dividend. So how much tax he need to pay on this dividend? Now the dividend is 10,000. We need to see what type of taxpayer he is. So he is a, we can see he's a basic rate taxpayer because his income is less than uh, the basic threshold. So he's a basic rate taxpayer. So you have to remember, you have to know the threshold for the basic rate, the higher rate and the additional rate. This thing has to be on your head. If you are the person who are doing the tax exam, the small thing always has to be your head, even though obviously the rate and band is here on the side, you can see it, but do not depend on that. If you depend on that, if you click there, it will take a time, you read this. So don't depend on that. I never advise students to depend on that. You have to remember that. So basically that is a one to 37,500. The half rate is uh, 37,501 to 150 and 150 over is the additional rate. The dividend rate we can see that is 7.5% for the basic rate. For the higher rate 32.5 and for the additional rate 38.1. So we said, okay, we understand that. So let's move on and try to solve this question. So he's a basic rate taxpayer. So up to 2000, he don't have to pay any dividend. So up to 2000 pound is zero rated. So there is no tax. And another 8000, he have to pay 7.5%. So let's calculate that. 8000 times 7.5%. And that gives you 600. So he need to pay uh, the dividend, the tax on the dividend is 600. If his income is 21,000 and the dividend income is 10,000. Before that 5,000 pound, up to 5,000 pound, the dividend was free, but now it is HMRC don't like, like the employer take the dividend from the company. They want to take the salary. So they say like you become director, take the salary, but don't take the dividend because uh, they're discouraging the people to take the dividend. That's why like they don't make it free anymore. So only, only up to 2000 pound, the dividend is free for the whole year. Otherwise, if you take dividend, you have to pay the tax. All right, the next one we have, Honey received 2,500 in interest from the building society interest. So if you have a savings income, the treatment is a little bit different. And 310 from the individual savings accounts, ISA. Now ISA is, uh, is uh, for the whole year, it's up to 20,000 20, is free. So up to 20,000, there is a no tax, it is exempted. So 310, we're not going to consider. It is only for the ISA individual savings account. But for the savings income, if you are a, if you are a uh, basic rate taxpayer, so up to 1,000 pound is zero rated. And if you're a higher rate taxpayer, then 500 is zero rated. Yeah, so we can see here, this guy, Honey, he is basically, uh, his income is 45,800. So it is cross more than 37,500. Uh, 37,500 means he he just uh, above the threshold of the basic rate. So he is on the higher rate, isn't it? If he's on the higher rate up to 500, he don't have to pay the tax, it is zero rated. So if I said from 2,500, if we minus the 500, so only 2,000, he have to pay the tax, isn't it? So Hanis income from the investment on which the tax will be paid on 2,000. Isn't it? So how much will be the tax? So the total tax payable on the interest 
on this interest by her in this one will not be considered because up to 20,000 pound is exempted for the whole year. Now this one, the total tax payable on this interest by honey, how much it will be? So we have it 2000 and the rate will be 40%, isn't it? So 40% because he is a, is a higher rate taxpayer. You can always check from here. Is a higher rate taxpayer. So the rate will be 40%. So it will be 800. So you're going to say you need to pay tax 800 on this 2000 pound. So this is number one. Number two is uh, we have uh, Ivanka receiving building society interest against the savings income. Her other taxable income is 147,900. So Ivanka's income from the investment on which the tax will be paid, how much it is. Now, remember, as we said, if you are a basic rate taxpayer, then up to 1,000 is free. If you are a higher rate taxpayer, then 500 is free. But you are, higher rate is finished on 150,000. Higher rate is finished on 150,000. We can have a look at that. Once again, we can open that. We can see the higher rate is finished. 150,000, isn't it? So now we're going to check what is the calculation here. So we can see um, uh, this one, Ivanka income investment. So this is 3,200. So you need to see how much the amount he need to pay the tax. He, he have no basically, uh, uh, he have no uh, uh, allowance anyway. So he need to pay the tax on 3,200. But the question is like, how are we going to calculate that? How much will be the tax payable? So let's have a look at that. So we said up to 150,000 is the higher rate. So higher rate band will be end up on 150,000, isn't it? Now his income is 147,900. So if I said minus 147,900, because he have some threshold left from here, how much it is? So 150,000 minus 147,900. So he got some threshold for the non-saving income that is 2,100 non-saving income, isn't it? So Ivanka received, this one is the savings and her other taxable income, this so obviously he's crossing the 152,000 and anyway, if he added this two, it gives you more than 150. So that's why he have to pay the tax on all amount 3,200. He don't have any allowance, zero rated. So you have allowance for the non-taxable income like the non-saving income that is 2,100 and that will be 40% because up to higher rate it is 40%. So 2,100 times 40%, that gives me 840, isn't it? And after that, still have something left because we take 2100 from 3200 so we're going to say 3200 and we use 2100 for the higher band and how much is the left from here so 3200 minus 2100 1100 reach to the additional rate additional rate any additional rate means 45 percent so i said 45 percent how much it is, so times 45%, that gives me 495. So 495 plus 840. So 495 plus 840, that gives me 1335. So this is my uh, tax calculation for the Ivanka. So all of this thing will be very clear for you if you know all the tax rules. So my advice will be like uh, on the first page of the book or on the question bank, any book you follow, you'll see the tax rules is there and try to memorize all of this. It will save you a lot of time in the exam. Do not depend on this side like the uh, reference material so that you're going to open and you're going to check. It will be wasting a lot of time in the exam. And you have to answer 13 questions in this exam. And obviously the time will be 
uh, very consistent for you. So more you know the rules, so you can apply it quickly. You don't have to read it. If you try to read and you have to, if you try to answer, it will take a lot of time for, for you. So it is not advisable at all. So make sure you uh, revise the formulas and try to write every time, everywhere, so that you memorize it for long, so that you can finish your tax exam very quickly. All right, so maybe the next lesson, maybe we try to talk about uh, uh, next questions we have in this uh, personal tax. And uh, the, hopefully uh, this lesson will be helpful for you to understand a little bit about the personal tax. And uh, if you have any question, uh, you can always email me. My email uh, you have on the description. Uh, and uh, thank you for watching. So hopefully like uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, practice will help you a lot for the exam. Thank you very much.